And you say, and you taught her to sing like that, huh? <laughs> Amen. Whoo! What a day it's been in God's house. I'm glad I can come and have fun. Go ahead, Cody. Pick it up. Pick it up. If you'll find your way to the book of 2 Kings tonight in chapter two, pick it up. That's all you gotta do is pick it up. How many would pick it up? Okay. Everybody in here, raise your hand. You better pick it up. Because what God's got for you tonight, if you don't pick it up, you're gonna be without. That might be the last opportunity that you have to pick up. 
Might be the last opportunity that you have to reach down and pick something up. And I know this passage of scripture, you know it by heart. We use it so often and so much, but you know, it's just a, it's just a blessing to be able to, that God's give us this in word. that We can come and apply it. You see, Caitlin's picked something up. She went ahead and picked it up. God blessed her. God anointed her. And she reached down and she picked it up. As you stand to your feet tonight, and let's honor God in reading of his word. 2 Kings chapter 2, back and towards the front of your Bibles, if you didn't already have it. Somebody may have to read it because my eyes is done. I reckon a gnat got in here and made my eyes water. That's what. Oh, Lord Jesus. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven into a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets, prophets at Bethel came uh, out, to, uh, out to Elisha and asked, do you know what the Lord is going to take your uh, master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elisha said to him, stay here, Elisha, and the Lord uh, has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and, and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. And then Elisha said to him, stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as I live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked home. 50 men from the company of the prophets went and stood at the distance facing the place where Elisha and Elijah had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked the difficult thing, Elisha said. Yes, if it were you, uh, yes, if, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, I will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire of horses and a fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elisha went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, my father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took a hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elisha's coat that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elisha and struck the water with it and when, uh, where now is the Lord, the God of Israel? He asked him when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, the spirit of Elisha is resting on Elisha and they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. You may be seated. The most important part is verse 12 tonight. I meant 13. It says, Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak. He then picked it up. And that's where I want us to look tonight is he picked it up. It doesn't, you know, here it is, it's two men. And this story is about these two men who is going along together. They're walking together. They're, they're, they're spending their time together. Elisha's in training with Elisha. And, I mean, he's taking everything in. He's taking everything in. But there was one thing that, that Elisha really took away from Elijah in all of his teaching. is whatever comes before you, you pick it up. You take it. Whenever your teacher, and we got some teachers here tonight, whenever your teacher is trying to tell you something and you say, 
sitting there and, and you know what, they can tell you all day long and they can write it on the board and they can do all of this but until you pick it up, it is no use to you. It will not do you any good. You have to take it in. You have to re- physically pick it up. And here Elisha was learning all this great stuff about Elijah and it came that opportunity that he had to pick something up and he picked it up. And, and, and it doesn't matter. You can be here tonight and you can have all the glory and the power of God. Rest for sure, it can be right here. And all this glory can be here, but until you pick it up, it's no use to you. You can, you know, you can, you can have an umbrella and be standing in the rain and have that umbrella in your hand and until you open it up, it is not doing any good the purpose that it was for. You see, God give the spirit for glory in mind in your life. God give us the spirit to operate. God give us the spirit to live in. But until we operate, until we pick up, that spirit is doing us no good. So we gotta pick it up. And Elijah wanted, he, he wanted something. He wanted what Elijah had. He even wanted not only what he had, but he wanted it to be doubled. He wanted more and more of it. God's looking for some people who wants more of what he's got. God is looking for some people who want more of what he's got. One, two, three. God is looking for some people who want more of what he's got. Woo! Lord have mercy. (coughs) So until you picked it up, it didn't do you any good. So here we are. Here we are. I I can stand here and I can prophesy to you. I can tell you all these things. I can tell you what's coming out of heaven. I can tell you what God is wanting you to hear tonight. But until you pick it up, it's doing you no good. It will do you no good until you take physically and pick it up. And you see, devil wants to discourage every one of us. The devil wants every one of us to be so discouraged that we will not take and pick it up. The devil wants to tell you, just leave it down there. Just don't bother with it. Just let it be. But I'm telling you tonight, that is not what God's saying. Why did we come? Did we come and say, oh, Lord, I've showed up here, so now I want you to bless me. Oh, Lord, I've showed up here. You know I could be, God, you know I could be sitting home, at home sitting in my recliner. Now, you know I could be home sitting in my recliner, but I got out of my recliner and I come here, and I want you to make these singers sing some songs to bless me. I want you to make them musicians play some sounds that will tickle my ears. I want you to tell the preacher to get up there and preach. It doesn't matter how much they sing, how much they uh, uh, play, or how much I preach. Until you want it, you got to pick it up. You got to pick it up. You see, it's any given service, and there'll probably be some here tonight. They was here some here this morning. Didn't hear nothing that was sung. Didn't hear anything that was preached. They was texting on their phone and they were scribbling, making notes. That's in every service, not only here at CFI, but everywhere. Rest for sure, they're not picking it up. It doesn't matter how much is operating. They will not pick it up because their mind is occupied. Satan has minds occupied and you're going on. You see, sometimes I... Brother David, I mean, some, as pastors, sometimes every one of y'all, I, I, I think I'm gonna start this. For every service, I'm just gonna choose somebody out of the congregation to come up here and sit on a bar stool or sit on one of these stools here and watch the congregation as I preach. That way you'll see what I see. Yeah. Wait, you wanna be the first one? And you go, we're gonna take notes. We're gonna take notes about... So and so, these two was, they looked at other and, and, and they giggled and laughed the whole service. Uh, this one here, they, they text the whole service. This one over here, they, they slept the whole service. Because <laughs> they ain't picking it up. They ain't picking it up. Woo! Hey, it doesn't matter. God has worked for thousands and thousands and thousands of years and everybody hadn't picked it up. I mean, when you have gone, when you've, when you, what in the world, whenever, I mean, when, when, when Jonah was spit out of a belly of a whale and everybody didn't get that, 
I mean, what does it take when, whenever it was that, that Noah built the ark and everybody was making fun of him? But you know what? Noah picked it up. Whenever God told him said to build an ark, he built the ark. He picked it up and the floods came in. Why in the world did that did not sink into their coconut heads? You see, when you pick it up, it doesn't matter how much water comes upon this earth because whenever the ark was floating, the waters rose above the mountaintops. It was that deep, but the boat went over the mountaintop. And if you'll pick it up, you'll go over the mountain in your life as well, church. You'll go over the mountain in your life as well. But you gotta pick it up. You gotta grab a hold to it. You know what? This is where the church needs to be today is where we will reach down and pick it up and take the torch and run with it and go to the other side because the church today is not operating in the power that it should be operating in. It's just not operating in that. Elijah said, man, I tell you what, Elijah, I, I, I want everything that you got plus more than what you got. And, 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 and when they, whenever his coat was laying there, laying on the ground, you know what? Elijah reached down and, and he picked it up and he said, where's the God of the heaven on body at now? And he rolled it up and he struck the waters and the water went back to the east and it went back to the west and he said, the glory of God is already here today. The glory of God is already done fell where it needed to fall. The glory of God, because he simply took and picked it up church somebody reach down and pick it up tonight pick it up you can be here God can be the God of your life you can be here tonight, and you know what? You can be, you can be, you can be uh, uh, down and out. You can be here, and you can look to something else that might be better in your life. We can be here, and you may, you may be here, and, and you might be on fire for God. You might be here and you say, I've, I've never missed a church service in the last 10 years. I've never missed a Sunday school class in the last 20 years. But you know what? You can be here and the glory of God can be here. But until you pick it up, until you let it be operating in your life, it's not doing you any good. It's got to do some good. It takes a little bit of earth effort. God's got power for us. God has got spirit for us. God has got love for us. God believes in us. Do we believe in ourselves? Do we really and truly believe in ourselves? Tell somebody, God believes in you. Now look to somebody and say, God believes in you. Now you just look to them and say, pick it up. Pick it up. Take what God's trying to give me and you. Pick it up. Pick it up, we gotta pick it up. You see, the enemy is not in control, but we're in control of the enemy. Another example about picking it up was Samson. In the book of Judges, in chapter 15, in verses 13 through 15, it says, agreed they answered, we will, we will only tie you up and hand you over to them, we will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him from the rock. As he approached Lehi, the Philistines came towards him shouting, the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax and the bindings dropped from his hands. Finding a fresh drawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. You see, Samson his uh, was powered he was in, he, 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 the, the glory of God, the power of God was on Samson. And, and this is an opportunity to where the enemy is coming. The enemy is after to kill him. The enemy is coming to destroy him. And, 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 and when the glory of God fell on Samson, they had him bound, but he come loose from his troubles. And the same with mine in your life. You know what? If we will reach down and pick up the spirit of God, then we're not bound by the troubles that comes in mind in your life, but we're overpowered that trouble that comes in mind in your life. And God will provide. He will provide the instrument, the tools that you need to overpower that it becomes for me and you. It was just coincidental. It was just coincidental that that jawbone was laying there, wasn't it? 
I mean, that just happened. My gracious, that could happen to anybody. It sure can. But I can guarantee you God will put the job on there. He reached down, picked up a simple little old bitty jawbone of a donkey and was able to slay a thousand men just because he picked it up. Just because he picked it up. So what God is providing for me and you, we need to pick it up. Many times the, the spirit of God has been moving into church and, and, and there would be some that would get it, the some that the spirit would just come on to and they would pick it up and some would not, you know, I don't, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all turning flips over there? I don't know, but the glory of God's on me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> why, why, why are y'all so happy? You know, if you walk into a room somewhere and you, and you see somebody and they just bubbling over, they just jumping around, having a good time. They, I mean, the glory of God's all over them. You say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> the glory of God, in other words, what God has provided, I have picked up what God wanted me to have. I picked up, I'm gonna take a hold of everything that God's got for me. I'm ready to slay the devil. I wanna slay Satan. I want all of his little devils to be cut out. If you'll just reach out and pick up what God's got in store for you, church, I know that you can overpower the enemy. You can overpower the enemy. Oh, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, church, pick it up. Pick it up. There, there's an army today that's wanting to stand strong and, and where it was Ezekiel carried out into the desert and he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Yeah, they can. As soon as they were prophesied over, as soon as God blew the breath of life back in them, an army stood up and it was picked back up right where it was left off. So you can be dead in your spirit today, but if you'll pick it up, God will blow the breath of life back into you. Did y'all get that? Oh, you can be dead in spirit today. But if you'll just pick up what God's providing for you, then you can be the army standing strong, ready to fight and tackle the world. But it's all according that if you will pick it up. We have to pick it up. We have to pick it up. There's a time to stand. There's a time to rise. And that time has come. We're gonna say today, am I gonna be part of the, am I gonna be part of the problem or am I gonna be part of the solution? I want to be a part of the solution. I don't know about you. Tell somebody, I want to be a part of the solution. Man, I'm telling you, the church needs to pick it up. When we'll pick up the cloak, this is what I'm saying. Hey, I'm man enough. I'm woman enough. You ain't woman enough to take my man. Yeah, y'all be one of take my man, I'm telling you. Woo! I'm man enough, I'm woman enough, I'm brave enough, I believe, I trust, I'm committed, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up what belongs to me, I'm gonna pick up what God's provided me, and I'm gonna fight the enemy, I'm gonna fight the enemy, but I gotta pick it up. I gotta pick it up. You see, God provides. If you don't pick it up, somebody else is gonna pick it up. If you don't operate in the spirit, somebody else is gonna operate in the spirit that she was supposed to operate in. If you, you know what, and if you don't pick it up, somebody else is gonna receive the gift that you were supposed to receive. Now, if there was a $100 bill laying down here in the floor, somebody give me a $100 bill. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all don't trust me? Lord Jesus. <laughs> what is wrong? If there's a hundred dollar bill laying in the floor, it ain't a hundred. <laughs> it's a two hundred dollar bill. If a hundred dollar bill is laying in the floor, twenty dollar bill is laying in the floor, and I told you to pick it up. You're gonna do just what you're doing now. You're gonna sit there. You ain't gonna pick it up. You ain't gonna pick it up. You see, we'll, we'll only pick up. <laughs> hey, 
Jeppe Mahler. Oh, that's gas money. See, you went with me one night to preach at a church and they, uh, they give an envelope and I said, ma'am, I don't need that. Y'all just keep that. He said, no, this is gas money. Old Bo said, gas money, we rode in my truck. <laughs> we rode in my truck. <laughs> that was my gas. <laughs> That's my money. I said, the favor of God's all I can say, Bobo. <laughs> Why will we only pick up certain things? Why will we only pick up certain things? If I laid a rattlesnake down there and I got one in the back, I'm gonna bring it out. Ray ain't here, he's, he's only as crazy as wanted to pick up a snake. <laughs> rattlesnake anyway. You see, if we'll get serious about God, God will put the things before mine in your life just like he did Samson. God will put the things before mine in your life just like he did Jonah. God will put the things right before mine in your life just like he did Moses. God will put the things right before mine in your life just like he did Elisha. God will put the things before mine in your life just like he did Elisha himself. God can lay out just, I mean, your mind can't even imagine the things that God can lay before me and you. And he does it every day. Every day God is laying something before me and you to pick up. How many times do we pick it up? How many times do we walk on by? Where are you going with that preacher? How many times has God laid it on your heart? You needed a, hey, somebody needs a phone call and he laid it on your heart. Want you to call him. <clears throat> nah, I'll call him later. I'll call them later. How many times have you been trying to go somewhere and, and God said, you know what, you need to stop here and see so-and-so. I'll do that later. I'm guilty. <clears throat> I'm guilty. Y'all better raise y'all's hands. Y'all guilty too. <laughs> not let me stay here by myself. And you see what happened when I didn't make that phone call or, or I didn't stop by I robbed myself from a blessing because God was giving me something to pick up that I could do something for somebody. That's the whole reason Elisha, he saw everything that Elijah did for, for people. And that's all he was wanting to do was to help in the house somebody that he could bless, that he could do things for. But he wanted a mind that he could do it doubled of what he was taught to do. He was taught to do it a certain way by Elijah. He says, I want a double portion of that because I want to do it twice as much and I want to do it twice as good. I want to do it twice as better. I want to do it. Copy if y'all want to come on. Pick it up. This is the year of new beginnings. This is the year that we're saying, we're going to take the ball and we're going to run with it. This is that year. And God can lay out all kind of stuff before me and you tonight. God can lay out stuff before me and you all next week. And until we pick it up, it is not gonna do us any good. You will not get a double portion. See, Elisha, if he had not have picked up that cloak, he would not have gotten a double portion. If he had left it there, he would not have had the power that he had. If he had not picked it up, church, he would have never been able to accomplish to do the things that he had done simply because he asked God for it and he reached down and he picked it up. He picked it up. Is there something that you need to pick up tonight? Is there something that you really and truly need to pick up tonight?